What happens when an NFL franchise has to declare for bankruptcy only two months before the season begins? Which forced the franchise to relocate across season having all current players opt out of their contracts and having even below average NFL players reject contracts. Your only option is to go out and sign a bunch of players that no other NFL team will want anything to do with. Welcome to the Rejects Madden 19 Franchise Series. Well, since it's Halloween and all, and if it's not Halloween, I did an awful job and did not edit this video in time. But since it's Halloween, I decided to scare you guys by playing three games. You're going to see this team play three games in today's episode. And that's scary. This team and gameplay is scary. But to speed things along, since it is already going to be a long first regular season for the Dublin Shamrocks, we are going to play the rest of the preseason in today's episode. We're going to play the Bills the Browns, and the Broncos to round out the preseason. Last episode was an absolute mess. It's first game in Dublin Shamrock history, although it was a preseason game. It was bad. 34 to nothing. Really can't get much worse than that. We did debut our first player on tryout terms, and that is Tim Tebow, who only went 3-8 and eight for 32 yards and interception. He's going to have to do a lot better in today's episode and in the rest of the preseason to make this team. With that said, though, not like he did any worse than anybody else. But you law are going to have to pay close attention to the gameplay in today's episode because at the end of the episode, you are going to have the chance to decide the whole entire starting lineup, the first ever starting lineup in Dublin Shamrock history as we head into the first regular season in team history. You're going to see a ton of straw polls in the description box below, and that's how you're going to cast your vote for the starter at every single position. And also, we are going to have to cut some players in today's episode, and that will also be decided by a straw poll. It'll be a little bit Bit different since it is the preseason because we're probably gonna have to cut multiple players to get down to the allowed roster size but at the end of the episode we'll also put a straw poll in the description box below and you guys will be able to vote on which players we do cut from the active roster but before you guys do go and vote make sure you watch the gameplay so you know which players played the best in the preseason and so you can see which players do deserve the starting job for this team and as a small added bonus every single player that wins the starting job will get a plus two added to their overall. It's not much at all, especially with how bad all these players already are, but it is a small yet rewarding bonus for winning the starting job on this team. Now with that said, it is time to sign a player on tryout terms for today's episode as voted on by you guys. The player we will be trying out, like I said, it's going to be a little bit different for the preseason. We'll let them try out for the rest of the preseason, but after that, it's only going to be per episode basis. Then you'll decide at the end of the episode if the player makes the team or not. But with that said, the player that will be signing for the Dublin Shamrocks on tryout basis is going to be none other than the speedster himself. That is none other than Dree. Archer, the 5'8", 173-pound, 27-year-old running back out of Kent State, has officially been signed to the Dublin roster. This guy was one of the most electrifying prospects coming out of the 2014 NFL Draft as he was selected by the Pittsburgh Steelers with their third round selection. Big reason he was drafted that high was the fact that he ran a 4-2-6 40-yard dash at the NFL Scouting Combine, which today is the third fastest time in history. Dree Archer touched the ball a little bit his rookie season for the Steelers, but since then has not touched the football once in a game. The Steelers cut him after the 2015 season. He signed a futures contract with the Jets and was then cut by the Jets. The Buffalo Bills did go and claim him off waivers in 2016, but uh, for some reason, Dre Archer didn't report to the team after he signed his contract, so that uh, kind of, you know, didn't really sit well with the Bills, and after that, was no longer a Bill, and ever since then, has not been a part of a team. And that is until now, as he does get another shot at the NFL with the Dublin Shamrocks on a short-term NFL tryout contract with the option for us to extend the deal to a three-year contract worth the league minimum. Dree Archer is blazing fast with 98 speed, 96 acceleration, and 95 agility. But, you know, that's really about it. He has 70 carrying, 54 trucking, 44 strength, that's, I mean, this is really it. All he is is fast. I mean, these, these attributes are awful. They're absolutely awful. But with his speed, we are going to try to use his skill set to his utmost potential. We're going to play him at kick returner and punt returner. And he is going to see some action at running back in this preseason to see if he can actually do enough for this team to earn his contract. We're going to have to see if his speed is enough 
to make up for the rest of these ratings, which is absolutely god awful. But he is going to see a lot of time in today's episode and throughout the preseason at the running back position. And in today's episode, he is going to see some time at the kick return position at an 81 overall, which is the highest on our team. And as a punt returner, as a 72 overall, which is also the highest on the team. I know it's the preseason, so it doesn't mean too much. But the starting lineup has been changed a little bit as we head into the next preseason game. Just really trying to mix and match. Give them more playing time to a couple players so we can see really what they can do out on the field. But like I said, don't put too much thought into it because we're going to probably change it for each of the last three preseason games. But Johnny Manziel is going to get the start at quarterback. Chad Johnson's going to be the number one receiver with Corey Coleman moving to the two. On the offensive line, the only real change is Albert Hainsworth is going to start at left guard and on defense we're going to put Mark Herzlick at the one at the middle linebacker position and aside from that Terrence Cody and Sean Oakman is going to start at defensive tackle we put D Milner at the number one cornerback and Justin Gilbert at the number two and not only are we playing bad in actual games apparently we're doing awful in practice too so with all that said and done it's time to jump into week two of the preseason as we are going to debut our brand new stadium Clover Field. You see what we did there? Gonna be a really strange start time as we're starting at 9 p.m. Keep in mind we are in Dublin, so they're actually like five hours ahead Eastern time, so it's technically like a 4 p.m. Eastern time start. And once again, guys, I'm gonna repeat myself probably every single episode. Make sure to leave the players you think we need to try out in this series moving forward in the comment section below. As always, the ones with the most thumbs up and obviously fitting the mold of the series will be the players we do try out in this series. And once again, you're going to have complete control of this team as there's going to be a ton of straw polls in the description box below so you guys have full control of the Dublin Shamrocks first ever starting lineup. I will mention it once again at the end of the episode but we are going to have to cut some players so there will be another straw poll for that in the description box below. One final thing, I did get you guys to vote in the last episode rather you want me to use my face cam in this series. You guys basically said yeah and a lot of you said you wanted me to do it just during the gameplay but we're not going to do it this episode since I am going to be playing three games that'll be a lot. So starting next episode in the regular season, there will be face cam in the series in the gameplay portions of the episodes. Unless you guys absolutely despise it and we'll just take it out the very next episode. No more stalling. It is time for the first ever NFL game to take place in Dublin, Ireland. I don't even really know if you consider it an NFL game because it's, it's going to be a beatdown. We all know. One thing that I don't necessarily understand is that, you know, I know we're a bad team and all. But like in the intros of every single game, it doesn't even have our freaking helmet up. It just says EA Sports. That's how bad we are. They don't even think highly enough of us to freaking have our helmet in the intro. But look at this stadium. Absolutely beautiful. As we do step foot onto Cloverfield for the first time. Are you guys hyped? Probably not, because we all know. We all know what's about to happen. But it is what it is. And guys, I've seen a little tidbit in the intro. Some crazy stuff has happened. Apparently, the Buffalo Bills have none other than just, just wait for this. Just wait for this. You guys are going to be as happy as I am. I mean, look at this. Blake Bortles. Blake freaking Bortles is now the Buffalo Bills starting quarterback the former quarterback in our franchise before you know he decided to opt out so it's a little you know maybe a little bit of you know redemption for us because he didn't want to come to Dublin he didn't want to be a part of our team so hopefully you know I mean we're not gonna win but hopefully we can at least pick off Blake Portals one or two times I didn't even show you guys last episode Roberto Aguayo how's his kickoffs looking nine mile per hour win kind of you know at an angle went to the five yard line didn't get all of it but I mean at least this is not like backwards as long as it's not going backwards, stop LeSean McCoy in the backfield on the first play of the game for a two-yard loss. What a start. And also, guys, since we are combining three games into one episode, to avoid it being, like, an extremely long episode, LeSean McCoy picks up about, like, five or six yards. To avoid this being, like, a 45-minute video, I will probably cut down the gameplay to the highlights just to highlight what happens throughout this preseason, but still show you enough so you guys can get, you know, make informed decisions on who's going to be our starters for the first ever starting lineup in Shamrock history. Oh, God. Oh, that's going to be an open man. That's a, that's a bunch of open men. That's an open receiver. That's a first down, down to a 42-yard line. Oh, come to Papa. Oh, Sean McCoy, first down. Mark Kerslick, just too slow, coming out in a 4-3 set. I mean... I don't know how effective they are, I don't know how talented they are, but you're telling me Terrence Cody and Sean Oakman on the same defensive line, I would say would be able to stop the run, especially up the middle, 
And that was what, like, that whole entire sentence was supposed to lead up to. And I go to say that, and they literally run right up the middle for, like, seven yards. I mean, you think Sean Oakman at 6'9", 350-plus pounds, and Terrence Scotty, about 517 pounds, would be a good one-two punch in the middle to stop the run at the middle. But there we go. You see what happens. Now, the fact of the matter in this situation is the fact that we just have to accept that teams are going to get inside the red zone against us. It's just going to happen all the time. We just need to, you know... Focus on having a really good red zone defense as we get a stop there. Actually made them lose a yard. And just hold teams to field goals. They're going to get to the red zone as long as we hold them to field goals. God dang, that guy's jacked. We'll be able to stay in games. Not for long because they'll eventually outscore us with field goals since we more than likely are going to get zero points all the time. But for the most part, games won't look that bad when it comes to the scoreboard. But third down and goal. Blake Bortles is five wide. Their coach, you know... Is uh is crazy. Allow Blake Bortles all that freedom touchdown. A guy with the last name of freaking Kroom scored against us. That's that's when you know your team's just not good. Well apparently Drew Archer didn't report to Dublin either because uh he's not in the ball game. Trent Richardson first play. Oh, we actually got positive yards. Still no Drew Archer. At least we have some fresh legs in the ball game. Ray Rice. See what he can do this time. And uh bounce it outside. He stays up! But uh the seventeenth guy to touch him. Hits him in the backfield, so we lose two yards. Now Dre Archer comes in the ball game when he knows he's not gonna run the football. Anyways, let's see if we can get a miracle here. Justin Blackman, dude, offensive line's bad. If we had split second longer, Justin Blackman's open for a first down. But we are the Shamrocks. Here we are, our chance to hold the Bills to a field goal. Third down and two, bringing pressure. We blitzed against the play action pass and still did not get pressure on Blake Bortles. All it takes is one, Jesus, that is the worst defense against the run I think I've ever seen. Dre Archer's first carry as a Dublin Shamrock. Stretching it out to the outside, I mean, that's a yard. Third down and seven. With our offensive line, we really just need to look for short completions. That's all we have time for, to be honest. Underneath, Chad Johnson. I'm not sure if that's a first down. Fourth and inches. Fourth and inches. It's preseason. Why the heck not? Let's get Rob Gronkowski's brother in on the action. Fullback dive. That might be the greatest play we've ever run. We've been conservative enough. Let's let Johnny Manziel sling the football. Okay, B's going to be open. That's going to be Corey Coleman. I mean, that really was only like a seven-yard reception. But like every yard is like gold here in Dublin. But... I mean, Justin Blackman line up in the backfield. I mean, what do we have to lose? Third and inches. Run up the middle. We have That just epitomizes it. Th that just epitomizes everything. Johnny Manziel missing the handoff to a wide receiver lined up in the backfield. Once again, why the heck not? It worked the first time. Why not again? Fourth and one. Robert's brother with the first down. So, some bad things have happened in Dublin. We're just going to let Johnny Manziel sling the football on this play. This ball is being thrown regardless of the coverage. We're going to fit that in nowhere. That's a great point. Well, another glorious half of football from Dublin. I mean, it's only 14 to nothing. I guess it could be a lot worse. Two passing yards. Two passing yards. Demarcus Russell comes in. Still hasn't fixed the shoulder pad situation. Quick passes. Quick passes. Armonte Edwards. We just got a first down. Call me crazy. I'm actually liking what I see from Jamarcus Russell on this drive. Can he lead us to the... Oh, and as I go to say something positive, we get a holding call. Just give me a couple seconds in the pocket. Justin Blackman, it's a first down. Like I said, Jamarcus Russell is actually slinging the football on this drive. Croissant in the backfield. I'm telling you, Croissant has been one of the best players on this team. Third and inches, just going to keep feeding the croissant. No pun intended. That's going to be a first and a little bit more. I'm telling you guys, this guy's been a surprise of the preseason. He's got to make the team. Got to. Third and six. Short passes, my friends. Short passes. The croissant has space. The croissant continues to be a huge playmaker force as he brings the ball all the way down to the two-yard line. Fellas, this is the closest we have came to sniffing an end zone. Is the impossible actually going to happen? Trent Richardson with the handoff. Would you ever have believed it? Jamarcus Russell hands off to Trent Richardson for the first touchdown in Dublin Shamrock history. 
What's actually going on? I was just gonna skip the extra point, but I mean, it is Roberto Aguayo kicking. We gotta make sure he makes it. And thank God he did. Don't wanna count my chickens for the hatch, but it is a third down and 10. Josh Allen's in the ball game. Oh my, oh my, no, no. Into the fourth quarter. I mean, it is only a touchdown game. They are in scoring position. But never did I think we we're going to be this close this late in this ball game. Oh, boys, here we go. Third down and six. Need to hold them to a field goal. Josh Allen can't convert two third downs in the same drive. Well, yes, he can. Oh, what's up with these catches? First and goal. A miracle is going to be needed. But we have Hayes Poyer the third with a huge play. That's actually a pretty big position battle that's going underneath the radar. Hayes Poyer the third or Mark Hursley? At least we have a lot of size in that defensive line, just not a lot of athleticism. Daquan Bowers blows up the O-line, but there's a flag. Oh, dear God, there's a flag. Oh, it's going to be holding. We actually have a penalty called against the other team. Cameron Tom, third down and goal from the seven. That, that's a legal touching of some sort, but I'm not going to ask questions. It's not a touchdown. They're going to have to kick a field goal. As much as I do want to try and win this game, it is important that we give each and every quarterback as much playing time as possible. And I mean, Jamarcus Russell did lead us to our only scoring drive of the preseason thus far, but we do need to give Tim Tebow some time. And, you know, if we get another drive, maybe Pat White some time too. From what I've seen in the comments, really nobody cares about Mark Sanchez. But ideally, we do want to give him some playing time and give him some equal opportunity too throughout this preseason. But maybe just not this game. Old Timothy Tebow, what can you do for us? You have an open man. That's the croissant. Hung on to the football. Second down and inches here. Going to be smart. Hit the underneath route. Armonte Edwards with the catch. So there's only so many plays in this formation in the hurry up. But as long as it's effective, I suppose. Justin Blackman's going to be open again. If Tim Tebow could have let him upfield, you know, could have been a little bit better. First down is needed big time. Big time. You know what? Tim Tebow. A ton oh, let's see if we can send this receiver down the field. Just going to scramble. Tim Tebow. Scrambling. With the speed. And that is what Tim Tebow brings to the table. You know what? Tim Tebow's going to scramble again. Make sure he slides so he doesn't fumble. But another first down from Tebow. Guys, I have to say, I like what I see from my team the last two drives here. Croissant again. I mean, this will only be a couple yard gain. But dude, that's better than going backwards. Third and one. Going to try to continue the drive here. Going to give the ball to who else? The croissant man. He has the space. He had a hole. Oh gosh, that was almost, almost broken for a touchdown, but Croissant continues to be the MVP of this preseason. You guys definitely have to give him consideration for that starting running back job with the way he's performed thus far. But anyways, first and ten, got to score a touchdown, got to. Oh, this is going to be holding, might as well just throw the freaking ball away. Gosh dang it, who was it? Who's the culprit? Alex Boone, I don't even like you. First and twenty, this is, this is already bad. First and 20. We have a man. Oh my God, Tebow. Oh my actual God. For everything we've done on this drive, maybe we should convert him to tight end because by God, that was actually atrocious. All that open space, all that green grass leads to that. Well, we have the ball back with 40 seconds left to go at our own seven, down by 10. I put in Mark Sanchez only to throw the ball deep. I'm throwing the ball deep regardless here. Just gonna throw it up. <laughs> oh man I didn't think I'd ever say this but honestly with the 19-7 loss I think we play better than what the score indicates I really do I mean a loss is a loss but there was some promising football played in today's game I mean aside from Johnny Manziel with an 8.3 quarterback rating they played decent Marcus Russell actually showed some accuracy Tim Tebow, aside from the one bad pass, especially with his feet, showed some promise. And once again, man, our best running back, Dalton Croissant, is actually our best player through the air as well. Justin Gilbert and Shane Scove are actually our leading tacklers. Did we even have a sack? No sacks. We had a couple tackles for loss. Daquan Bowers actually played really well today. All in all, a much better performance than preseason week one. So reversing time zones once again as we have to travel to Cleveland. Second to last preseason game and pretty much the lineup's gonna look exactly the same. Aside from the quarterback position we're gonna give pat white the start and then behind him just try to give every quarterback a little bit of playing time didn't get to see a lot of Dre archer so we're gonna give him the start again at running back but if anything hopefully we can just continue to improve from our performance because we definitely had a big improvement from week one to week two in the preseason hopefully we get that much of an improvement and then some from week two to week three i mean if there's any team that we are gonna beat 
you know, it would be the Browns. Well, that didn't take too long. Browns already had the ball inside the red zone. Oh, that could be a touchdown. David Njoku all the way down to the 14. Baker Mayfield. I mean, Baker Mayfield against his defense. It's like Peyton Manning trying to throw the ball against, like, 17. What is up with those uniforms? Bro. Bro, 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 bro. Dude. So, Dublin, we we have some, like, wardrobe malfunctions. Oh, my. Oh, that's some crazy pants. And not to mention, apparently, we're endorsing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this game because every single one of our players has a Buccaneers logo on their pants. Whoever's in charge of getting our pants ready for games need to be fired because this is unbelievable and unacceptable. But as I was saying, pretty much Baker Mayfield against our defense is like Peyton Manning trying to throw the football against, like, 17 quarters on the field. Like actual like monetary quarters. But anyways, Duke Johnson just steam like oh, 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 this is bad. I mean, you think about it. Pat White and Dre Archer in the same backfield has the potential to be deadly. But with this offensive line, you never know. Read option time. Oh, this actually could have been good. But of course, once again, had to be a holding call. Probably weren't going to get the first down with it being first and 10. Now with it being first and 20, you have a better chance at winning the lottery. So first and 20, play action pass here. You know we actually have an open man, but no offensive line to block for me to be able to throw the ball to the open man. Justin Blackman on the post. Hey, talk about throwing the ball down the field. I mean, out of all of our actual receivers, I think Justin Blackman's probably put up the best preseason thus far. Still a lot of preseason football to go. Going five wide once again with Pat White. Okay, okay. Oh no, oh no. A wide open man. Another third and long giving Pat White the chance to throw the ball down the field, which probably is more than likely a mistake here. You know what? Swoops again on the slant. Can he run up field? He can't. Justin Blackman, like I said, still putting in some work for this team. Well, it was a fun drive up to this point. Don't think Pat has another good throw left in him here. Maybe, though. Maybe. Hey, Corey Coleman with the catch. Corey Coleman up the field. Miracles. Look at all these freaking guys still trying to take pictures. Truth be told, no matter how this third down and seven ends, this has been a pretty decent drive from Pat White. Yeah, he had a couple unerrant throws, but at least we made it to this point. Can't really say we've made it to this point that often in this preseason. Third and seven here. Let's see. Slants are open. That's Corey Coleman. That's a catch. Corey Coleman finally starting to break out for this Dublin Shamrock team. Second and goal from the six. We have an open man on an underneath route. Corey Coleman upfield. Ooh, ooh, tackle just shy of the goal line. Third and goal. Gonna try to get him with a toss here. Dre Archer with his 98 speed. Let's see if he can do it. If we can get the block. Didn't get the block. Went ahead and kicked the field goal. Time to make a play. Third and one. Gonna try to bring pressure. Shane Scove is gonna be there. He's gonna make the tackle. Actually, him and Mark Herzlick combined to make the tackle. Fourth and three. They actually have to kick the field goal. Maybe they can actually miss it here. Can we get some sort of miracle here? No, we can't. Two minute drive before the half. We'll give it to Johnny Manziel. He had a bad game last time out, but it's time for some redemption. Not necessarily how I planned it. See if Johnny has any magic up his sleeve here. Oh my. Oh. Oh. The potential. Third and eight. Once they get past the 50, we're not playing that bad of defense. Baker's going to scramble. Hayes Pulliard. Oh. Oh, I was going to be upset if he hung on to that catch. Oh my! Oh my! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's see if Johnny has the arm strength. Just a little bit shy. Gonna be intercepted. No miracles here. Oh god. Oh. No. No, 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 no. What? No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. This, this is... Can you tell me? Can somebody tell me? Can somebody explain what just happened? Because I think we just entered a different universe, different time dimension. Because... You see... You see this. You see that. You see all this. Oh my, Corey Coleman. He actually has some space here. Corey Coleman. No way. This could be the biggest play in double chain back history. Is he gonna make it into the end zone? Does he have the stamina? I don't think he does, but Corey Coleman, huge play. Biggest play in Dublin Shamrock history. 70 yards, Jamarcus Russell's first pass of the ball game. I mean, a note, uh, I think even, I think even Mark Sanchez could have completed that pass. Third and 13, gonna need some sort of miracle here. Oh my, Corey Coleman with the touchdown. 
What a drive! Jamarcus Russell leads the Dublin Shamrocks 80 yards down the field with a beautiful comeback route ran by Corey Coleman. Jamarcus Russell, man, I gotta tell you, he's definitely making a name for himself and trying his best to become that Dublin Shamrock quarterback. Really don't understand why the Browns are going on try hard. Baker Mayfield's still out on the field in the third quarter of a preseason game. That's what they get. Duke Johnson just got hurt. Second and four. Hand off up the middle. Carlos Hyde. First down and more. This could be the dagger. All the way down to the four. Pick! Pick! Hayes Pulliard! Oh my gosh! We did it! Shane Scove with the pressure on Baker Mayfield. Forces the errant throw. Ball lands right in the hands of middle linebacker Hayes Pulliard. As we get a huge turnover. Oh man. Don't know what the spin move is for. But I don't care what you do after you get the interception. Do whatever the heck you want, Hayes. You have the ball at the three-yard line. 97 yards to go. Fourth quarter of the game down by 10. It's Tebow time. Second and eight. Quick little pass. Got out of our own end zone. First down. Third and 17 here. This could be our last chance to get back in this ball game. See what type of magic Tim Tebow has up his sleeve. Hopefully it's something. Hey! Ooh, good intentions. Had a little bit of a hole in between those four Brown defenders. Decent read from Tebow. But unfortunately, a little bit too far ahead of the receiver. Fourth down and 17. Might as well punt the football. Hey, just kidding. Kevin Tindall wants us to go for it. I mean, I guess what the heck, right? Fourth down and 17. It's a preseason game. Who cares, right? Throw the ball. Hey, Ray Rice with the reception. Kevin Tindall's a genius. First and 10. Get the ball off. Get the ball off. Yes, yes. No, no, no. We've had that play all game long, and our quarterbacks are too inaccurate to complete the pass. So three plays were not enough to pick up the first down. You know what? It's Pat McAfee time. We need a big play. Oh, they knew it was coming. Guess they're not moronic after all. Need a big play here. Michael Jordan. <laughs> that's, ex that's actually hilarious. I don't even care that we didn't pick that up because Michael Jordan was the one that went up for the ball. That does it. The Browns tacked on a field goal. We lose 23-10. Kevin Tindall, still not a happy man. So now 0-3 in the preseason. I have to say, though, we have definitely improved since that first game of the preseason. We have shown signs of promise, but there's still a long way to go. But I'm actually proud with the way we played the last two games. Play of the game, really? Pat White had a heck of a game at quarterback. Play of the game offensively got to be Corey Coleman. Still no sacks on the quarterback. We've literally had one sack this whole entire preseason. We actually got a player upgrade from that game. Mark Hursley, middle linebacker. We're going to upgrade his run stopper archetype up to a 65 overall. Let's go, Mark. Hot freaking dern. You're telling me a 65 overall needs 56,000 experience points to get one upgrade. Well, there's our first injury of the preseason, Dejon Allen. He's going to be out for six weeks with broken ribs. I mean, honestly, who cares? You know what? I might actually just use him as one of the players we cut. So we are going to have to cut five players. Huh. I can't actually just cut them. We'll place them on IR. Maybe that means we only have to cut four players. So yeah, we only have to cut four players. This is the recommended players they want us to cut. Haven't seen anything from Akeem King, so I really don't care about him. Blake Sims, we haven't seen anything from him this preseason, but that's not his fault. You know what? We need to give him a chance. We'll let him play this last game in the preseason. This is the last game of the preseason, going back home to Cloverfield in Dublin, taking on the 1-2 and two Denver Broncos, which I guess records in the preseason, like I said, don't even freaking matter. We are going to let Blake Sims start this last preseason game to give him a fair shot, and we had to do it. Had to give him one chance. Gonna let Mark Sanchez start this last preseason game. Now, as much as I love you guys, it is 4 a.m. So for this last game, this is the third game we played this episode. I am just gonna play the moments for this last preseason game. So it's only really gonna be the highlights of this final game. And sometimes the moments do glitch out and do simulate some plays that should be plays that you do, user. So I do wanna warn you for that. But even at this point, I think we've seen a lot from the players. And hopefully, guys, up to this point, do have a good idea on who you think the starter should be for this team going into the regular season. So for the first time this preseason, apparently we did not give up any points on the first drive defensively. So in comes Mark Sanchez and Blake Sims. Blake Sims and Mark Sanchez a chance? I don't know where Blake ran. But hanging off to Trent, I guess. Trent, what a carry. Trent Richardson, uh, that might be our biggest carry of the whole entire preseason. For sure, Trent Richardson's best carry. There's Blake Sims. There he is. We're going to hand it off to him. Right up the middle. Actually having a little bit of success. Four yards. I don't know, man. 
Apparently, Mark Sanchez makes our offensive line block better and our running backs run better. Maybe they just know if they don't run the ball effectively, they're going to have to actually witness Mark Sanchez throw the football. So maybe that's a good strategy. I don't know. Second and six. Blake Sims bouncing it outside. I'm going to keep the ball on the freaking ground. Third and one has worked thus far. Keeping the ball on the ground again. Up the middle. Oh, of course. Of course. And he gets hurt. You know what? I mean, this is our last preseason game. Might as well just leave it all out on the field. I mean, this was effective earlier in the preseason. Why not now? Robert, Robin Krowski's brother once again, and it works. I mean, that's literally our best play. Well, since we ran the ball every play up to this point, maybe they'll actually bite in this play action. It's a play action pass here. Chad Johnson, he's open, and a strike from Mark Sanchez within the 40-yard line. And I am getting happy. Ray Rice, a little bit of space. Ray Rice, Mark Sanchez, Mark Sanchez. Bringing the luck of the Irish. Only bruised ribs for Blake Sims. We'll bring him back in so he can still get some action. Second and 11. Oh my. Just, oh no. Justin Blackman, please run fast. He breaks the tackle. Justin Blackman. And for the first time in team history, although be it the preseason, we have the lead. The Dublin Shamrocks. Mark Sanchez to Justin Blackman. Of all quarterbacks to be at the helm as we take our first lead in franchise history. Mark Sanchez. What a drive. What a freaking drive. Well, that lead didn't last too long. Like I said, that's what happens when you play the moments. Third and seven. No idea who that is at quarterback. Is that past the nice Chad freaking Kelly? Well, found Wilson out for a first down and much more. A lot of you guys wanted me to bring in Chad Kelly to the team. But, I mean, he's a member of the Broncos. Why the heck would he want to come to Dublin at this point in his career? Oh, that was embarrassing. Two minute drill at midfield. Johnny Manziel coming in hopefully to tie this ball game up because I want a chance to actually win a game. Although it is the preseason. At least we can get some. Oh, that could be a pick. That is a pick. Oh, that was a bad read. Real bad read. Good play from David Amerson. How does that happen? Ooh, that's Ray Rice on a linebacker. Huh. Oh my god. So that was Ray Rice on a linebacker. That's Sua Cravens, though. Sua Cravens turned Ray Rice into ramen noodles. So we're going to give Johnny Manziel one last chance. This is his third opportunity at a two-minute drill. Two interceptions later, here we are. At least they didn't score on that last drive. But anyways, first down and ten here. But, oh, we have RB down the seam. That's the croissant man. Oh, my. Trey Griffith's going to have so much space. Johnny. Johnny. Well, why not run it again, I guess. Second down and ten here. Croissant's going to be open again. I don't know what type of route that was, but it was effective. Let's see here. Oh, no. Oh, no. And who other to recover the fumble? Daniel Croissant. Oh, I don't see anybody. Another fumble. We recover it again. And it's Daniel Croissant again. There's no way that was actually him. Daniel Croissant's the greatest player of all time. Third down and 20. I, I just don't know what to say at this point. You know what, though? You know what, though? Oh, gosh. Monty Edwards. That's his third pick. Third pick. Halfway through the third quarter, tired of this Johnny Manziel nonsense. Gonna bring in Pat White. Fourth and three. This might be the ball game. Can we get it? Oh, Blake Bell. Had a little bit of separation. A little bit thrown behind him. Nobody else is really open there. Denver scored again. Pretty much a GG. Seems like we are gonna go 0-4. First ever Dublin Shamrock preseason. Thank God preseason doesn't actually count. Third and four here. Oh, uh, croissant's open again down that seam. Oh, nah, this has been a bad game of bad reads. Very bad reads. Not from me, from the quarterbacks. Definitely not from me. Well, guys, that seems to do it. Dublin Shamrock's preseason ends 0-4. And a 35-7 to defeat at the helm of the Denver Broncos. Such, you know, promise to this game. Started off 7 to nothing, and they scored 35 unanswered. But at least we did have some positives from this game. Most notably, Mark Sanchez actually had a heck of a game. But I wonder if one, like, game, 3 of 3, 57 yards and a touchdown is enough for you guys to actually keep him on the team. Heck, maybe he's a dark horse to start. I don't know. It's up to you guys. Still, no sacks. One sack 
combined from the team in the preseason. We only had two tackles for loss. You have to say though, seems like every game Shane Sko has been one of the only players to have tackles for loss. So we do finish the preseason 0-4. So final Dublin Shamrock preseason stats and the last bit of information for you guys to take into account before voting for your starters for the Dublin Shamrocks. Pat White actually led us in passing yards, 13 to 29, no touchdowns, four interceptions. That's just, that's pathetic, isn't it? Mark Sanchez, the only quarterback for us, did not throw an interception. Jamarcus Russell actually had the best accuracy ratings. I mean, looking at the stats, honest to God, looks like Jamarcus Russell, stats wise, had the best preseason for us. The rushing leader was Dalton Croissant with 33 yards, Tim Tebow in second. Ramonte Edwards in, Dalton Croissant led us in receptions, both have an eight. Receiving yards goes to Corey Coleman with 149. Armonte Edwards with 130. Didn't really think he had that many, but he did. Justin Blackman, who I thought was the most impressive receiver, with 104. Chad Johnson really didn't do too much and didn't really hear much from Trey Griffey either. Mark Herzlick led us in tackles and had the only sack recorded for us the whole entire preseason. Shane Scove in second with 17. And really not too much to highlight aside from that. Virtual Aguayo, one of two field goals attempt. That's, that's pathetic. We only attempted two field goals the whole entire freaking preseason. And Pat McAfee, I mean, that's not bad. That's actually pretty freaking good. But guys, that is going to do it for the Dublin Shamrocks preseason. A lot of stuff to be decided by you guys. Go in the description of this video and there is going to be a ton of straw pulls. When it comes to cutting players, we do have to cut four. I'm probably gonna list like 10 or so players and the top four voted players on that list will be cut from the team. Now when it comes to starters, I'll find a way to make it most efficient for you guys when it comes to voting, but you're gonna decide every single position via a straw poll description box below. So make sure to take this opportunity to have a voice in who starts in this series. Don't forget, we will be trying out a player in the next episode. So be sure to leave your suggestions in the comments and vote up the ones you think would be best for the series. Next episode, we will be announcing the starters. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. But that does it. I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. God bless and peace.